High marks for Scotts Bluff City Manager Kevin Spencer result in a pay raise for 2024. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. And our top story, Scottsdale City Manager Kevin Spencer will be seeing a salary increase following Monday night's council meeting. Earlier this month, Spencer's one-year performance evaluation was held and received praise from all five council members. Last night, it was time to decide if a pay raise was in order and two options were presented. I'd like to propose to increase his compensation by 4% and then increase his, his uh, retirement match 1%, so making it a 10% total retirement match. Okay. Anyone else? I was going to propose just doing a 5% increase. Okay. Spencer thanked the council for their support and generosity and opted for the option with the retirement match which will begin in January. Well, legislation to help enhance national security could be a part of the upcoming Nebraska legislative session, according to State Senator Brian Hardin of Gehring, as he spoke last week at a luncheon in Scotts Bluff. Hardin told those attending the pre-legislative luncheon that the Sentinel Missile Project has state and federal authorities closely watching non-military development in and around that project area. He said the solar project proposed for southwest Scottsbluff County is likely one such project and there have been other developments of a curious timing or nature since the start of this year. Properties were being sold at multiples of their assessed value and in cash. When I say cash, I mean suitcases full of Benjamins. That tends to get every gossip going standing next to every cow. I grew up in Mitchell Valley, and I had cows that stood next to them and gossiped. It's a great place to gossip. And what we learned is that there wasn't just a single piece of property, but as we began to research it, we have now found seven. Beyond that subject, Hardin said the next session will likely include another fight over rules. However, he believes instead of changes, the body just needs to enforce those rules already in place. He said additional work on property tax relief is also likely to be a topic of discussion during the session. We'll have more news right after this. The journey of a dream becoming reality. When we're young, a dream develops into a passion. That passion continues to manifest and grows as you do. It becomes all you want to do and all you want to be. It gives you direction. It drives you. Then your dream has become a reality. When that dream is ready to be reality, Platte Valley Bank will be with you every step of the way. Benzel Pest Control has been the Wyoming and Nebraska area's most committed professional pest control company. We have four generations and nearly 50 years of experience serving Nebraska, Wyoming, and Colorado, as well as certified entomologists on staff. So whether you're dealing with spiders, wasps, rodents, or any other unwanted visitors, Give Benzel Pest Control a call today for an estimate at 888-229-2128 or visit our website at benzelpestcontrol.com. Welcome back. A traffic stop earlier this year has led to a felony drug charge for a 53-year-old rural Minotaur woman. Rochelle Talley has been charged with possession with intent to distribute methamphetamine, 28 to 140 grams, as well as an asset forfeiture charge. Responding to a report of a suspicious vehicle on Highland Road back in October, a sheriff's deputy pulled over a Jeep Wrangler near a county road after watching it cross both the fog and center lines. 
During a search of the vehicle, a backpack on the center console was found to have nearly 39 grams of a substance that tested positive for meth, as well as a credit card with Tally's name and $1,700 in cash was discovered. She made an initial appearance on the charges yesterday afternoon in Scottsbluff County Court. While the Goshen and Garing Fort Laramie Irrigation Districts are seeking a request for proposals for a construction manager at risk for a multi-million dollar project to rehabilitate tunnels 1 and 2 of the Fort Laramie Canal. Scott Hort, the assistant manager of the Garing Fort Laramie Irrigation District, says with cost projections ranging from 52 to 84 million dollars, they're using the CMAR process in effort to obtain a guaranteed maximum price. He said the upgrades are intended to last for more than 100 years, and with a January start date for a selection of a CMAR, there are tight timelines for construction and completion. Hort says both irrigation districts have received grants from their respective state governments of more than $20 million each. He says both are hoping to find additional grant money to pay for most, if not all, of the project and minimize the financial impact on the district's patrons. And the Scottsdale Police Department and Nebraska State Patrol are both currently participating in the selective enforcement overtime of Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign. The campaign started Friday and will be running through January 1st. Its goal is to help reduce alcohol-related fatal and serious injury crashes. Law enforcement officers are conducting high visibility enforcement efforts during this time. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration reports that, on average, 32 people across the country die daily in drunk driving crashes. In Nebraska, there are an average of more than 70 alcohol-related fatalities each year. This overtime enforcement is funded by a grant from the Nebraska Department of Transportation Highway Safety Office. Life is crazy. Pain is stressful. How can anybody concentrate with these busy schedules? Now you can. This is Ben Moravec coming to you from HydroZen, a float therapy business right here in Scotts Bluff. I'm here today to let you know we now have memberships for $49 monthly. You can guarantee yourself at least one float per month. You know how floating keeps your muscles relaxed, your joints relieved, and your brain clear to think? Now you can float at a reduced rate each month. Inquire today at HydroZenFloat.com or call us at 308-63-FLOAT. HydroZen. Unplug and recharge. This is KNEB.TV Ag News from the FNBO Ag Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. I remember last week we joined you from the National Association of Farm Broadcasting Convention. Of course, there were lots of radio broadcasters on hand, those who share their news, markets, and weather, both on AM and FM radios. A Nielsen study shows that more than 80 million Americans listen to AM radio in particular each month. But some vehicle manufacturers have been taking steps to remove AM from their dashboard. Had a chance to sit down with one AM radio station owner to get his thoughts on that situation. Radio station owner Brian Whittakins, owner of WRDN Radio in Wisconsin. You are quite passionate about this issue. Why is that, Brian? We own a radio uh, station in Durand and most of my farmers in my local community rely on our AM radio signal. And it's to take that out of the dashboard, the farmers are gonna lose out, the local community is gonna lose out, and, and really it's going to be end up being another subscription that people just can't afford, and it's very unreliable to base everything off the internet. 
seems like with some of the car makers, they're, they're kind of moving to more of that subscription model. There are people out there now willing to pay for radio delivery, but in your part of Wisconsin, a lot of our viewers today in Nebraska, they don't necessarily have access to all of that, the same level of streaming services out there. Is that what you hear as you, as you get feedback on this issue? Yeah, there's that. There's also the, how much more do we have to pay? I've paid, I've had farmers tell me I've paid $70,000 for this truck and their AM receiver in it sounds terrible, but in my 1996 Silverado work truck that has an AM stereo receiver in it and we broadcast an AM stereo, the farmers are like, you have FM on the AM, how did you do that? And, and they're, they're furious about this. It's like, wait a minute, we're paying this kind of money and now you're telling me I gotta pay even more just to be able to get farm news and markets or listen to the local ball game or whatever. That that's where people are mad. Yourself and others rallied around this issue, took it up uh, with the folks in Washington, D.C. even. As you have visited with lawmakers on this issue and those in the, the Federal Communications Commission, what's their, what are their thoughts? They are very concerned that this is happening. They are concerned that it would be a loss of another local outlet for inf news and information. And that's why you're seeing the pushback from D.C. with the AM for Every Vehicle Act getting bipartisan support. I mean, I don't think anyone watching this would ever imagine the most liberal senator in the United States Senate, Edwin Markey, gets together with the most conservative senator, Ted Cruz of Texas, to co-sponsor a bill together. But this is where it happened. My boss, as he and I have had conversations, will say there have been many times where people have predicted the death of AM radio, but what do you know? It's still here today. As an AM radio station owner yourself, where do you see this industry going? Radio, but in particular, AM. It's going to be a lot like farming and agriculture after the pandemic. Everybody started to do what? Local food. Go to the local butcher shop. Go to the local farmer. And that's what you're seeing. Our success is we do local news, local farm news, local farm markets, high school games, church services. We even have a polka show. It's because of that connection to the community. That's why people continue to listen to us. And I think you're seeing more of that from AM stations. You and I are catching up today at the annual gathering of farm broadcasters across the country. I know this was a panel discussion that was discussed, and I thought an interesting point that came out of that, somebody had asked, what should AM radio stations be doing better to ensure their place on the dashboard? Your thoughts on that conversation? One, well, you gotta have decent programming. You gotta have something that people want to listen to. The other thing is, is for the owners, they need to make sure that their AM stations are working properly uh, and, and sounding the best that they can because of the receivers. You can't complain that the receivers are bad if you're sending out a bad signal. So those are the two biggest things I think AM station owners need to do. And for the customers, the listeners, and the farmers and the ranchers, you need to complain to, to the car companies as well and say demand a decent AM radio in, the, in your vehicle. And they can make them with a couple lines of code because it's just a computer on, in the car or the truck. What else is important? I haven't had the chance to ask you about yet, Brian. The other, you know, the other big thing with this is, you know, we broadcast an AM stereo, and when we converted a, a couple of years ago, this is technology from the 80s and 90s. I had farmers, a lot of farmers have a work truck, started calling me, going, "Why is it on my 96 Silverado you sound like FM, and on my 2023 Silverado that I paid $80,000 for you sound like a cell phone? What happened?" And that's been the big to, to explain that and get that information and that, that education out to the farmers and ranchers. And, and they know, they rely on us. Us at NAFB, we've been seeing how much farmers and ranchers rely on AM radio every day. Not only for the farm news and markets, but the high school football game. Or Nebraska's playing on a Saturday. What's everybody listening to? The radio probably in the combine. And so that's what makes things, that's what makes this important. Are new windows from Renewal by Anderson a great investment? You're darn right they are. 
Did you know that for less than your cable bill or cell phone bill each month, you could have new windows from Renewal by Anderson right now? Do the math. Renewal by Anderson windows will likely cut your energy bill significantly. They will likely substantially increase the value of your home. They're a great investment. Please contact our team now and ask about our fantastic financing options with approved credit right now. Renewal by Anderson, a great investment? You're darn right. Holiday Recycling Tips. The holidays bring wrapping paper, boxes, and trees. Remember, when done with these items, recycle them. Wrapping paper can be collected and recycled in one of the city's recycling bins. Boxes can be collapsed and stored to use later or recycled. Finally, your old Christmas tree can be dropped off at this location. This holiday season, give thanks and a start to a healthier new year. Me at Tri-City Stormwater. This Let's take a look at your community calendar, brought to you by Riverstone Bank. The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Better sleep and better health can be found at Western Sleep Medicine in Gary. Since 2006, Western Sleep Medicine has offered the lowest cost sleep testing either in their independent sleep laboratory or the privacy of your own home. You have control over your health care and your out-of-pocket costs. All insurance is accepted for a much lower cost than the regional option. If you need a sleep study, ask for Western Sleep Medicine. They've helped thousands of people over the years and want to help you. Western Sleep Medicine. Better sleep, better health. And finally, tonight's Western Nebraska Community College donated 24 themed wreaths to nursing homes and senior care centers across the Panhandle. The wreaths were decorated by various WNCC departments in a friendly competition, and the winning wreath was created by the TRIO Student Support Service Department, featuring the famous leg lamp from A Christmas Story. The decorating competition was a way to encourage employee camaraderie and spread joy during the holiday season. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.